Hey there, and welcome back to this next movie about getting scripts to run within Premiere. Now, in the previous movie, I shared with you guys the essential first step that is needed to get your panels to load into Premiere, to set your plist file so that it is in debug mode, all which is documented on this page in front of you right now on GitHub slash Adobe CEP within the Premiere Pro sample project. Now the next step is going to be, where do I go from here? How do I build my own panel? And just like the previous movie, I'm going to get to scripting in future movies. But for now, I'm going to give another background on what an extension folder actually looks like. So once again, I touched on this in the last movie, but one more time. The extensions that you put in Premiere live at these two file paths. They are either in Common Files, Adobe CEP Extension for Windows, or within your system library, Application Support, Adobe CEP Extensions on a Mac. Now, I showed you briefly in the previous movie what this looks like. I think I clicked into it really quickly. But you need to know what goes actually into these projects in order to make your script run. So if I had to go into blog example number one, you can see that I have an index.html file. I have a folder called CSXS, a JSX folder, and a lib folder. And this is what I feel is really the basis to get any simple script to run within Premiere. There are ways to do it with less files, and there's a whole bunch of ways to do it with way more files. But this is the basics that you will need. So now I'm going to pull up this graphic, and let's go one by one and talk about what each one of these files does. Now in your root extension, you have a folder name that is obviously the name of the extension. And out in the open, not in any subfolders, you have your index.html file. This is the HTML. This is what is going to build the structure of your panel. You can think about the dockable panels within Premiere as mini browsers. Think about opening up Google Chrome or Safari and then scaling that browser window down to a quarter of your screen and what's going to happen to the content within that browser window. Uh, sometimes it's responsive, sometimes it just stays in its position. It all depends on what's in the HTML and how that web page is built. So I mentioned this in a previous movie, but a background in HTML, while it's not necessary, will absolutely help you make these more functional and Definitely better looking, if, if nothing else. Now in the next folder down, we have the CSXS folder. Inside this lives the manifest.xml file. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like. I'm going to open up my Sublime Text Editor because it's hard to explain what an XML is. Now let's not worry about what an XML is and what it isn't. What we need to focus on in here is I have a template that is downloadable on the blog at premiereonscript.com. And if you download this, you can come in and I've, I've labeled what needs to change in order to get your template up and running with your script. So you can see that this is what the XML file looks like. You can see down here in resources that at main path, it is routing the main path to the index.html file. At the script path, it's routing that to where we have our script living. And then there's a menu name. There's all these other names up here, which you can see highlighted. And these are all parts that if you want to load a panel in Premiere from this template, you're going to have to change all these things up. All the change me's, you know, give your panel a title down here. All these are going to have to change in order for you to get this up and running. Just realize that I didn't show you what the HTML file looks like. So here it is here. Right now, this is set up for a single button, which reads change text here. So change that text to get it to run what you want to run. And it will run this function up here when that button is clicked, which will then talk from the HTML over into the extend script language and inform Premiere on what we want it to do. Now, back to this graphic, you can see the next folder is JSX. And within there lives your script document. So if we go in to the text editor and we look at that, I have this file called extendscript.jsx. And what you can see is that within this document, 
I make it pretty clear. Change this function name, change that name to the name you want your function to be, and then the code that you'll be testing, the scripts that you'll be testing in ExtendScript, you can just copy and paste that right over into this area. And when the button in the HTML is clicked, it's going to run the run script function, which actually should be the run all function. Sorry about that. And that is going to send information over to this dollar sign dot run script dot change this function name, which you'll also change that and execute all of your code. Now the few other things that live in this file structure are the lib folder, which includes the CS interface dot JS document. This is a document provided by Adobe, a JavaScript library that they provide so that your HTML can talk to and function with ExtendScript properly. Uh, there's a bunch of interesting features in here. Uh, we can take a look at what that looks like. It can be pretty kind of daunting, but worth a good look through when you have the chance and start understanding this stuff a little bit better. Finally, within this lib folder, you could also place, say, any of your other libraries that you want to extend the functionality of your HTML. Say you want to format it and you want to use some jQuery or a few other of the libraries that are provided under the Premiere Pro sample panel. You could place these in here and link to them through your HTML. If we go back to the HTML, we can see up here, this is where we say uh, there's a script with a source dot lib CS interface. And that's how we're pulling the CS interface dot JS file and making it noticeable in our HTML document. So that's a basic overview of what this stuff looks like. I want to just go through it one more time so that you can see if you have a script that you've tested right now and you want to get that into Premiere and you want to use this template, let's go through a step-by-step -step process on how to do that. So I'm going to come into my extensions folder where I already have the Premiere on script template made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to alert panel because we're just going to make a simple script inside here that just makes Premiere alert us of something much like the very first example I showed you in the first movie. So now if I drag this into my text editor and exit out of this stuff so that we can start new. Here's the template all ready to go. Just a side note, I'm using Sublime Text right now for my code editing. If you want to get that, you can go to um, sublimetext.com slash three. You can kind of try it out as long as you want, or you can buy it. I've been trying it out for quite a while now. But back to this, what I'm going to do is come into the manifest XML file. The first thing I'm going to do is change all these names because I don't want this to be called change me. We're going to call this alert panel. And then we will copy this and put it wherever there's a change me. I'm going to put it in there. And then we'll come down to the menu area and we will give this panel a title and we'll call it alert panel as well. Now, quick note, if you are running a version of Premiere that is earlier than 11.1, .1, you're going to need the CSXS area to say version 6.0, similar to the last video where we had to change the player debug mode in our plist. This is the same thing. It will not run in Premiere with version 7.0 unless you have Premiere 11.1 or above. Now that we've got the manifest XML file all ready to go, next what we're going to do is we'll come into our index.html file and we'll give this panel another name. Guess what we're going to call it? Alert panel. I am already linked to the lib.cs interface file. That's good. What I'm going to come down here and do is tell it to alert me. Then we're going to come up to change this function name because I don't want it to be called that. I want it to be called alert. That'll work. And then we'll come over to the JavaScript and change the function name to alert so that it matches the code that's in the HTML. And then within here, 
I have already included an alert. Please find and read the readme.txt file for instruction on how to use this panel template. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now this file in my extensions folder will have all the uh, makings of being a panel ready to run. So I'm going to jump into Premiere now. And now that I'm in here in Premiere, if I go up to Window, Extensions, look at there, there's an alert panel. It doesn't load. Okay, well, let's go back into Sublime real quick and just see in the XML file. I'm going to remove these spaces here because I forgot that you're not supposed to have spaces in the areas that say change underscore me. There was a reason I put that underscore there. Sorry about that. Now, if I shut down Premiere and I reload it and go back into Premiere, now I can go to Extensions, Alert Panel, and there's our little button that we can click, and it'll say exactly what we wanted to. Please find and read the README text file for instruction on how to use this panel template. So there you have it. There's a little overview of what the file structure looks like and what you need for a basic panel to run and also a template that you can use and customize in whatever way you want to do it. I think now that we've talked about how to get these panels loaded, we've talked about what goes into them, then in the next video we can start talking about how to actually get Premiere to do the things we'd like it to do. Let's start scripting.